Hello again everyone, it's Rob here. Rob Bidolf, there I am. And I am a children's author and illustrator. You might know me from books like this. Odd Dog Out, it's all about a sausage dog who doesn't fit in with all the other sausage dogs. Or maybe you've seen this one, my very first book. This one's called Blown Away, Penguin Blue and his kite on a windy day and all the adventures that they have. Maybe you haven't heard of me at all, but you know what? That does not matter because we are here today to draw a picture together. That's what we do here at Draw With Rob. We draw pictures, don't we? So, in case you've never seen any of my videos before, I'm gonna explain how it works. Lots of children, they tell me they don't think they're very good at drawing. Lots of adults tell me that too, actually, but I think that everybody can draw. Some people just need a little bit more help than others when it comes to the order that we do the drawing in. So I am here to help you. This is how it's gonna work. I'm gonna do a little bit of drawing on my piece of paper here. Then you, then I'm gonna stop for a second. You can pause your video and you can just draw exactly what I draw. Then when you're ready, you start the video again. I will draw a bit more. Pause it, you draw. Start it, I draw. You draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw. And at the end, we're gonna end up with a picture that we're really proud of, I promise you. You will be surprised at the results, okay? So, all you're gonna need for this particular drawing here is a piece of paper, a pen. Now, lots of people ask about my pens all the time, so I'm gonna tell you. This is made by a company called Kurataki, and it's a Japanese brush pen. It's just got a very sort of thin brush at the bottom, but it sort of feels like a felt tip, but because it's a brush, it's a little bit more flexible, so if I push harder, the line is thicker, and if I don't push very hard, the line is thinner and I really like to have a nice variety of line when I draw. So there you go for everyone who's asking about my pens. So yes, grab yourself a piece of paper and a pen. We might need something to color with a bit later, but we're pretty much ready to go. Now, what are we gonna to draw today? Well, I thought we would draw a monster. Oh, I love monsters. I really love drawing monsters because you know what? The best thing about monsters is we don't really know what they look like. So we can do anything. There's no rules when it comes to drawing monsters. So you can really let your imagination run wild. Okay, so this is how we are going to draw our monster. I'm going to, I'm going to show you basically how to draw this particular character. But if you want to do your own thing at any time, if you want to slightly change what I do, to do something that is slightly different, just something that you fancy doing, go for it. That's the good thing about drawing, we express our own creativity, so you don't have to copy exactly what I do. And when there are, when there are opportunities for you to do your own thing, I will tell you. But first of all, this is how we are going to start. I want you to put your pen quite near the top of your piece of paper, slightly right of center, and I want you to draw a curved line coming down your page to round about there. So sort of, I guess it's sort of in that middle section of your piece of paper, okay? And it's just a very slight curve like that. And then directly opposite that, I want you to do the same, but like a mirror image of it. So we're gonna come down there and we are going to bend around, just exact, try and get it to be sort of exactly the same as the other side if you can, that would be ideal. So it looks like a, Looks like some brackets, some big brackets or something, doesn't it? Now then, what I want you to do next is we're gonna join these two lines up in a sort of curve, but it's not just gonna be a straight curve. We're gonna sort of do a jaggedy curve because our monster character is gonna be a bit furry. So watch what I do. We're gonna go up, we're gonna go down, and then we're gonna start moving across, going up and down like that to give our monster a sort of little bit of tuftiness on top of his head. And let's do the same here, but this time, that way I sort of went, my jag, jig, jaggedy bits are all sort of pointing that way. At the bottom, I'm gonna do them going the other way, so it's nice and symmetrical. So there, joining the bottom of his body up, and sort of some zigzaggy, jaggedy, furry bits, like that. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to give our monster some really big, monstery arms that almost reach down to the floor, okay? so. I want just below where our jiggity jaggedy bit joins our smooth curve, I want you to draw a line that comes out almost straight out like that, okay? And let's do exactly the same on the other side. I think it's quite good. If you're doing 
So we're going to do one arm on this side, one arm on this side, and they're going to be pretty much the same, but again, mirror images of each other. So I always think it's quite good to do a little bit of each arm at the same time, because then quite often you get them looking pretty much the same. So a little technique tip for you there. Okay, so we're, let's do this, let's start with this side, and we're going to put our pen where we finished, and again, we're going to curve around and come down, and we're basically going to trace all the way down the same sort of shape that we drew here, but we're just going to add a few little zigs and zags in to make his arm a little bit furry. And then when we go past the bottom of his body, almost to the bottom of our page, we're just going to curve around, still zigging and zagging, and start going back up there. Okay? And then we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. So we're going to come down in a curve, zigging and zagging, start curving round, going back up with the body. And there we go, mine are pretty much even, aren't they? So one big body, two really big furry arms. It reminds me a bit of my character Kevin, this particular monster. I drew him in a similar way. Some of you might have done that draw along video with me a few weeks ago. Okay, let's give our monster some little legs. Okay, now again, if we weren't doing him furry, I'd just draw sort of two rectangular shapes like that, but we're gonna add a bit of zigzag furry texture to our legs. So we're gonna come down, go across, and then we're just gonna go back up. Little thin furry legs, just like that. There we go. <laughs> I like this guy, he's funny. Little legs big old arms. Okay, so that is our monster's body. Let's give our monster some facial features now, shall we? Now the eyes, we're gonna do the eyes towards the top of his, his um, body here. And we're gonna start with, if you imagine there's a line right down the middle of him there, we're gonna start our first one on that line, and we're just gonna draw our circle coming out to the left like that. A lovely big circle like that. And let's do the other one right next to it pretty much the same size, like that. Two monster eyes. Let's give him some pupils. Right in the middle of his eyes, I think, we're just gonna draw two smaller circles like that. Let's not color them in yet, like that, because I'm gonna show you a little thing you can do. What we do next, we're gonna do a tiny little circle within our small circle, sort of up in the top right-hand corner of it like that. And then we're gonna do a really, really tiny circle in the bottom left-hand corner, even smaller, just like that, okay? And then let's just color in, in between those two small circles on each eye. And look, it's a bit mangary, this technique, but it makes our eyes look nice and shiny. It's sort of a little bit friendly, I think. There we go, that's a good little technique there for doing pupils. Okay, let's add some eyebrows. I'm gonna make, you, you can do yours however you want. Do you remember I told you, if you wanted to make your monster smiley, you can add some eyebrows quite a long way above their eyes and that makes them look extra happy. I think I'm not sure what I want my monster. I think my monster's gonna be, a, it's gonna be smiley, but he's gonna be frowning, I think. So I'm gonna draw two big, thick, black, diagonal, furry eyebrows. Just like that, so he looks a bit cross. But I don't want him to be too scary and too angry looking, so I'm gonna give him a lovely, big, smiley mouth. And this is how we're gonna do that, okay? Now, I'm gonna get you from the bottom portion of his, his left eye, so the right eye as we look at it, we're gonna put our pen sort of down in that corner, and we're just gonna draw a line that comes down diagonally away, goes right over there to that side, towards that side of his face. And then what I want you to do is imagine that line was carrying on straight through that eye and coming out of the other side. I want you to carry it on a bit there, but before we get to the edge, I want you to curve it down like that, okay? Then over here, we're gonna do a similar curve down, just like that, okay? So look, he looks like he's, that looks like he's got a sort of cross, a sort of angry mouth, doesn't it, to match his eyebrows, but actually he's gonna be smiling. Because what we're gonna do, we're gonna carry on from there, we're gonna go down 
I'm going to do a big old curve around and join back up with the other one there. He's just doing a sort of funny lopsided grin. I'm going to give him some nice big lips. So let's trace that shape inside. So exactly the same shape. Again, we're going to stop at the eye, carry on out on the other side. And we're just going to come down and around. Join back up again there. Look, you can sort of see he's doing a funny old lopsided grin, isn't he? And this is the bit that's going to make him look quite monstery. We are going to add just quite thin zigzags going all the way across his mouth, just like that. Look, lovely, monstery teeth. I like this guy. He's cool. He is a cool monster. We'll have to think of a good name for him later because he doesn't feature in any of my books yet. Maybe you'll see him in the future, who knows? But again, if you didn't want to do his mouth like that, you can do anything you like. You could have just done little smiley bits coming out of the end there. His mouth could be huge all the way down there because there's no rules with monsters, isn't it? So you can do whatever you like. Now I'm gonna give my monster a couple of horns. Monsters always seem to have horns, don't they, in the books that I read. This is how we're gonna do the horns. From about here, we're just gonna come straight out horizontally like that. And let's do the same over here. Imagine that line goes all the way through his head. You can do the same there, okay? Then from about here, we're gonna go up diagonally a little bit and we're gonna go past that first line. Let's do the same here, slightly diagonally past our first line. Then we're simply gonna draw a triangle that, draws the, that joins these two lines up. One horn, two, two, two horns. There we go, our little monster horns. Now, I would say we're almost ready to start colouring our monster. Again, if you don't want to do his horns like that, you can do anything you like. But what I would like you to do is add some shadow by the feet. Remember my shadow trick? We just add a little bit of shading just around the feet. Maybe a little bit because his arms are almost touching the floor. Add a little bit of shading just around his arms. Like that. Perfect. Okay, now it's time to colour our monster in. Let's put the lid back on my pen. Now then, again, you can do whatever you like. Your monster could be tartan, covered in tartan coloured fur, couldn't it? It could have tiny little pink polka dots and of purple fur. He could be our favourite rainbow stripe monster. He could be covered in leafy patterns, flowery patterns. Do you know what? You can do anything you like. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I'm going to decide as I go. I'm just going to make it up as I go along. So I'm going to go into super speed mode. So I'm going to see you in about 30 seconds or a minute, something like that. And by the time you see me again, I talk to you again, sorry. My monster is going to be coloured in. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. So there we go. There is my finished coloured in friendly, slightly cross monster. You know what, sometimes when you use coloured pencils, you go over your ink and it sort of dulls the, the black of the ink. So sometimes what I do, I just go back in and I just sort of touch up the areas that I think need to look a little bit sort of blacker. So just around the eyes. Can you see? I don't know if you can see on the camera. It just looks slightly like it just needs darkening up, just freshening up a little bit. And it just sort of makes your drawing, just brings the elements of your drawing forward that you want to bring forward. That's probably fine. I don't think I need to do too much. So there we go. There is my finished monster. I can't wait to see what you've chosen, how you've chosen to color in your monster and what patterns you've given. You can see I've done red and pink stripes, nice bright yellow eyes and yellow horns here. If you want to make your horns look even more sort of like they're made of bony sort of stripe stuff, you can add a few little dots and spots just around the edges like that. Can you see it just makes them, it gives them a little bit of a sort of a harder sort of bony texture. 
don't know what horns are. are. Horns made of hair? I know rhino horns are made of hair, aren't they? I guess we don't know what monster horns are made of. Would it be to be? But can you see that just that just lifts it? And sometimes just adding that little extra bit of detail can really make all the difference. You see, I've I've added some green, little jaggedy green, couple of different greens. Uh, green marks there just to suggest that our monster is standing on grass. It's quite interesting, isn't it? You don't have to colour the whole thing in green to make it look like he's standing on grass. You can just sort of suggest it like that, can't you? Then, of course, we need to sign our picture. So let's just add my signature down here. Rob, there we go. Don't forget to sign your names. And I guess the last thing you need to do is give your monster a name. Now, as I was drawing this, I was thinking, what am I going to call him? And there was one name that just kept coming back to me time and time again, and I can't get it out of my head. So this guy is just going to have to be Brian. What do you think? I think that's pretty cool, Brian the Monster. I like a nice, um, a nice seventies name, don't I? I've got. He, I, actually, I think this guy could be friends with my character Kevin from my book, Kevin. And that book is all about. Um, it's all about a little boy called Sid who has an imaginary friend called Kevin, who's sort of a big furry monster, who's vanilla and pink coloured. You remember we've drawn him before together, haven't we? And what happens in that story is, Sid follows Kevin up through, because Kevin lives in the, in the loft above Sid's bedroom, and he follows him up through the loft, and he ends up in the imaginary wo world, and the roles are reversed, and Sid is the imaginary friend in this world full of creatures that look a bit like Brian here. So it's a fun story, you should check it out if you like the sound of that. Anyway, do you know what? I've really liked this one. It's been really fun drawing Brian, the monster here. And as I said, I cannot wait to see what you guys have come up with. So don't forget to take a picture of your picture and post it on social media using the hashtag DrawWithRob. And you can tag me in too. I'm at Rob Bidolf on Twitter. I'm at R Bidolf on Instagram. I'm on TikTok too, but I don't really know how TikTok works. And I, but you know, if you can find me, you can tag me on that. If you can tag, I don't even know. Can you tag on TikTok? I, don't, I probably should stop talking about TikTok. I don't know what I'm talking about, do I? Anyway, <laughs> take a picture of your drawings, tag me. I would love to see them all. And you know, fingers crossed, your drawing makes a grid of monsters. Now then, before I go, there is one other thing that I want to tell you about. If you are watching this on uh, Tuesday, uh, hang on, what day are we on now? Let's see, Tuesday the 19th of May or Wednesday the, 80, uh, Wednesday the 20th of May, then you might be in time for this thing. <gasps> Can you see that? That says, I'm ready, are you? What are you ready for? We are doing a world record attempt for the largest online art lesson ever. Now this is happening on Thursday the 21st of May 2020. So if you are watching this on the Tuesday or the Wednesday before that, then there's still time for you to go to this website here, artworldrecords.com and register. And then you can take part in our world record attempt. So Draw With Rob, we usually bring the videos out on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 a.m. But this Thursday, the 21st of May, the video is gonna be a bit later. It's gonna be at 4 p.m. British summer time, and it's gonna be live. <gasps> it's gonna be me actually there live, drawing along with you. And it's gonna be a bit longer this lesson, it's gonna be half an hour. And if you register and want to take part in the record, you have to stay with me for the full half an hour in order to count towards our world record attempt. And hopefully we're gonna get 10,000 people at least drawing along with me live it's going to be a lot of fun so please please register and join me then It'd be lovely to see you otherwise i will be back as per normal on tuesdays and thursdays thereafter and it will be lovely to see you all of my videos are up online if you want to go back and do any of them but it's been really fun today so i want to thank you for joining in with me i want you to take care and i'm going to see you again for another draw with rob very soon. Bye-bye.